So I do get asked a lot how is popcorn different than corn as far as raising it. Well, we can talk about the the harvest part. Uh, obviously using the same combine and the same corn head, but there's a few key differences. You can see my settings there, the rotors, tighter than corn. I'm on 21. I was running, I think I was running up to 37 on corn. Rotor speed's a little slower down there around 300. Not quite as much air and my sieves are shut a little bit tighter and the other thing is ground speed. I could actually be going faster here. I don't go as fast as I used to. I say used to, that's like 10 years ago. So I'm going in the high five mile an hour range here. Why do I do that? Because mechanical damage is a thing you want to limit with popcorn. Mechanical damage is stuffing up the outer shell, the pericarp of the popcorn. So you want to run a higher ground speed because we're talking 70 to 100 bushel crop versus 200 plus for corn. You want to keep the rotor, the machine full so you've got grain, threshing grain, not a cob bouncing around in there all over the place, bouncing off all the metal inside the combine. So you don't want mechanical damage because mechanically damaged, scratched, kernels don't pop, kind of defeats the purpose of popcorn, right? So that's why we run higher ground speed. Same thing with um, the soybeans we raise for seed. We want those to be treated pretty gently, so I run as fast as I can to keep the machine as full as possible while it's threshing, so that's the idea behind that. So as I'm running five and a half, six miles an hour out here in popcorn to keep the machine full, that's, I'm probably anywhere from three and a half to four and a half in regular corn. Now when we switched to a 12 row head like we have now, that was 10 years ago. The first uh, 12 row head we had was 2013. So when we still had an eight row head and a 9670 combine, we had three of those in a row. Um, I would run, to keep the machine full with an eight row head, I would run seven miles an hour, maybe up to seven and a half in popcorn. So that's moving pretty fast, but it keeps the machine full. With the, with the 12 row head, I don't need to run that fast. And we've actually been doing pretty well this year. I haven't counted them up, but I know the pile of scale tickets I saw in the office, I had at least five loads with 0.0, .0 mechanical damage. So. Must be doing something correct there. And then the other main thing is the deck plates on the corn head. You can see, I have those set to zero. And that's where I want them to be. That doesn't mean they're all the way closed. That's just their tightest setting. So why is that? And if you don't know what the deck plates are, if I get a minute, I'll get out and show you. So where the, the corn's going down each row, there's metal plates and one side's hydraulically adjustable slide in and out towards each other. That's where the stalk goes through. So normally in regular corn, you want to open those up as wide as your stalk to let the stalk through so the horn has not pushing it. It's coming down and then it's coming down and on those deck plates, the ear of corn pops off and in the head. So most of the plant goes down through the corn head and mostly just the ears come into the machine. Now on popcorn, you want those set on zero because these ears are skinny. Skinny ears. Let me show you a ear of corn and an ear of popcorn. So there's a ear of regular corn and here's some popcorn. So they're a lot skinnier. Now, a few years ago, I can tell you not having your deck plates on zero can be an expensive mistake. There's actually a section in the book, adjust the deck plates as close to each other as possible. Raise the cross auger. Uh, we actually don't do that on this new head. It's set pretty low. And if I'm getting no mechanical damage, then I'm okay with that. And I don't have to screw on adjusting the auger between different corn crops. Decrease the corn head back, back, back shaft speed. Uh, I usually do that uh, as conditions allow in any kind of corn. So deck plates as close as possible. I think there's actually a manual adjustment where you can take the non-hydraulic side and move it a little even closer, but I uh, haven't had a need to do that. I was out here doing popcorn. In fact, I was in the field across the road from here. It was early in the morning. The stalks were still hanging on and being green. Uh, still some dew around. They were pretty tough to cut. And they just 
they weren't going through the head very well. I should have waited, but I thought, oh, I'll be smart. I'll open the deck plates just a little bit. And we had just started the field. Sorry, I'm coming to the end of the field here. I'm gonna turn, actually go over to the truck. So I just started that field and we hadn't really been in popcorn. And I don't know, I just didn't have my head in the right spot. I was thinking, um, well, Let's open those deck plates just a little. I'll get out and see what the stalk looks like. We'll open them just a little bit and that'll help me go. And it did. And I went and I was thinking, man, the yield kind of stinks in this field. So I went, I loaded a truck or two. I don't remember what I did. Sun came out and I'm like, let's close this thing back down. Uh, my yield went up a lot, like a lot. So right away I knew what it was those ears were slipping down some of them probably all the way through the deck plate and I added it up over those acres it cost me eight thousand bucks to open those deck plates up so if you're on popcorn shut those deck plates down so you can see the the silver deck plates under the gathering chains there they're set on zero watch the left hand one see it slides open them all the way up so you want them closed all the way for popcorn Here's a closer look at the deck plate. So you can see a little bit of how the corn head works. Gathering chains are both going this way, so they're taking stuff to there. Auger brings everything in the middle, into the feeder house, and into the combine. So you want your stalk to be able to get through. I got the root there, but here we'll flip it over. You want your stalk to be able to go through there. So that's just about the size. The deck plate's a little bigger than the stalk. And then, so when it pulls the ear down, look under here, you got those snapping rolls. They're spinning super fast towards each other. So they pull the stalk down. And the, so the ear is riding down on the stalk and then gets popped off by the deck plate. So you can slide that. You saw I slid it open. You just want them as tight as they can be for popcorn because you can see even at tight, I can squeeze it down in there a little bit and get some butt shelling. And these are pretty worn. I run these brushes on the chains. Uh, when they're brand new, they actually overlap. I think this is the third season with them, but uh, they do help quite a bit on popcorn because uh, they give a little more cushion, especially when they're not worn out like they are. But uh, I wanted to run them another year. Anyway, that's why you set the deck plates tight for popcorn. It's just a little lesson on how popcorn harvest is different than regular corn. Now, as far as raising it, we plant it with the same planter. Population varies by hybrid. Sometimes it's a, it's a little lower. This was 32,000, kind of like we do our regular corn. As far as management, pretty much treat it the same. Um, run about 30 pounds less nitrogen is maybe the main thing. And uh, all popcorn is non-GMO, so uh, no Roundup. But, uh, half of our regular corn, uh, all of our waxy corn acres are non-GMO. So we grow uh, about two thirds of our crop is non-GMO corn. So no big deal.